Last week I showed you how I transformed my boring and drab fireplace and mantle into this industrial style steel wrap surround and live edge floating mantle. Make sure to check out that video as well. But to complete this look, I turned my old stockade fence into this whitewashed shiplap feature wall. This week I'm gonna walk you through the process of turning worn down old fencing into something that can be a centerpiece of your home. This project works not just for a fireplace overhaul like mine, but this also applies to how you can create a standalone feature wall or get even more creative. Check it out. So what you see here are about 120 fence pickets I prepared just for this project, but let's back up a second and I'll quickly show you how I did this. So about a year ago, I replaced this section of my fence and I saved all of these panels. And this is how I quickly broke those panels down to individual pickets. Using a cordless circular saw, I cut off the ends just inside the horizontal runners. The top and bottoms are where you often see the most broken parts of the pickets or the most rot from sitting on the ground. When you rip off both ends, all that is left is the center horizontal stretcher, which you can then easily pry off the pickets by hand or use a pry bar. Once you have all your pickets removed, make sure to stack them so they dry flat if they're wet, like you see that I've done here. Now I can address removing these nails that were left in the middle of the boards. You can hammer these out one by one, but I prefer to use this handy pneumatic nail remover tool. Just insert the sharp end of the nail and then bam, it shoots right out. I'll have to admit, I look forward to any time I get to use this fun little tool. The next step is skip planing these planks down to get that desired finish that retains some of the weathered texture. Now, I know I have this fancy planer, but a small lunchbox style planer works just as well, especially since this is just soft pine that I'm using. The goal is to plane off the first layer and leave some of the weather patina on the wood that will show through the whitewashing that I do in the next step. The planks will come through the planer looking differently. Some will retain a lot of the weathered character and others will look almost new again. This variance is exactly what I'm aiming for and you really can't mess this part up. Next, I cleaned up each edge on my table saw and then ripped these boards down to a final width of three inches. For the whitewashing, I'm using Kills, which is just about the cheapest paint you can find. I thin it with a bit of paint thinner until it rolls on evenly and allows the weather patina to show through while still appearing to be mostly white. I just recommend playing with the mixture until you get it how you want it and you're able to roll it on in only one coat. Because of my project, I had to remove the drywall around the fireplace and replace it with eighth inch plywood so the wood planks will be flush with the steel surround. If you're doing a feature wall, this step won't be necessary, but what you see me doing here is super helpful. I found the studs and marked their location using a level so I can know exactly where to shoot in the brad nails. I cut the first piece to a random length and then added a bead of construction adhesive, which I did for every plank, even if I don't always show this step on video. I lined up the first piece with the edge and shot in brad nails where I marked for the studs. To measure the second piece, I lined up the end and marked where it would mate up to the first. I cut this piece to length on my miter saw and then came back and butted the ends together before attaching with brad nails. To set the shiplap spacing, I'm using offcuts of the 14 gauge steel that I use for the fireplace, but the easiest thing to use here are nickels and they're the perfect thickness for shiplap spacing. And once you get the first few rows up, this process goes pretty quick. It's just marking the length, cutting the size, attaching with nails, rinse and repeat. Now I try to miter these corners to avoid using trim, but I quickly realized they weren't going to line up properly. So I cut off the miters with a handsaw and cut the ends flush from here on out. I continued attaching planks until I got to the top this last row was more narrow, so I ripped a few planks to fit before attaching like the ones below. I worked my way around to this side wall, and while I'm showing you how to enhance your walls, let me tell you how I recently enhanced the air I breathe in my home with the help of this video sponsor, FilterBuy. Now, are you like me? Have you forgotten to change your air filters in an embarrassing amount of time? With FilterBuy, you never have to think about ordering filters again when you sign up for their subscription service, which also saves you 5%. Each filter is made right here in the USA by a family-owned business in a factory in Alabama that used to make tank parts. They have over 600 size options and can custom make sizes so they they are guaranteed to have what you need, whether it's for a single family home or for a small business. Changing your air filters regularly can extend the life of your HVAC system and save you thousands. All orders ship for free within 24 hours. So check out the filter by link that's down in the description below. 
They have different Merv ratings to fit your exact needs, and when they show up, they're simply packaged and ready to install right away. Okay, thanks filter by. With the sidewall done, it's time to transition out to the main wall. I line up the end to match the plank on the sidewall and use the level to keep this board straight. Again, it's really important to get this first plank level so all the ones above and below can reference off of it. Then it's the same method as before, only this time I'm butting the end all the way up to that sidewall. I first worked my way up the wall, adding planks until I got to this board that had a big knot hole in it. Now, I like the character of the knot hole, so I marked where it was on the wall and then just hit it with some black spray paint that would show behind the knot. Another option here would be to just cut these sections out. Once I got to the top row, I used a spacer to mark the plank width and then used that to set my table saw fence before ripping this plank to size. To begin working down from that first plank, I use that same method, but this time the spacers go on top of the new plank that you're adding. And once I got down to the outlets, I covered them with some masking tape to basically create a cutting template. I set the spacing of the plank that goes around the outlets and used the utility knife to score the tape. I then peeled and transferred the tape to the back of the plank and traced around it. I cut this out with my jigsaw and this gave me perfectly placed cutouts around the outlets without having to do a bunch of measurements and math. For the trim above the fireplace, I first ripped four planks with a 45 degree bevel. And next I ripped them down to an inch and a half wide and cut all the remaining trim pieces to an inch and a quarter. After they were cut, I went back over those exposed edges and painted them white. The trim pieces above the fireplace get cut to their final length and then I could line up those 45 degree miters and attach them to the walls with brad nails. For the remaining trim, I cut the inch and a quarter pieces to fit on all the seams and also attach these with brad nails. I had to get a little creative for the trim along the bottom of my fireplace because of the angle iron on the edges. And to solve this problem, I ripped those corner pieces thinner so that they would line up with the other trim pieces along the front and side. And these just get attached with a little bit of construction adhesive. And with that, this project was done. Now, if you haven't watched the fireplace renovation, make sure you go back and check out that video as well. The shiplap wall is an easy project using simply sourced materials that are often free. If you're not taking down your own fence, a lot of times you can find fence panels just laying on the side of the road from other people that have taken down their fences recently. Now this is a great beginner DIY project that can absolutely transform any room in your home. I love how repurposing this old fence adds so much character to what was a boring and drab room. Now I'd like to take a quick second to thank my Patreon supporters, including the Woodpaster and Jenny and Davis, with an extra special thanks to my top patrons, DFM Toolworks, Matt Varagies, David Britton, and Doyle Dill. The support of all my patrons on Patreon is a huge part of what keeps this channel going, so thank you all so much, and if you want to find out more how you can support support the show, there's information down below. Okay, thanks for checking this one out, and I'll see you back here next time.